All right, awesome. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I hope you all had a good lunch. Uh, so today I'm going to be telling you guys about ML X-Ray. And so ML X-Ray is essentially an end-to-end -end debugging platform for your models that are deployed on the edge. So just a little bit about myself. I'm Michelle, and as I said before, I'm a principal engineer at New Relic working on the Pixie open source project. So that project is essentially a CNCF sandbox project, which is an observability tool for Kubernetes. And before my time at New Relic, I was uh, Pixie Labs' first engineer, and Pixie Labs is where the Pixie project was born out of. So, why should we even talk about debugging deployments of machine learning on the edge? So we see today that a lot of deployments or products and software are moving their machine learning models to the edge. So for example, we have Cruise, which is self-driving. That's a very popular hot topic these days. So essentially, your car is going around. It is picking up a bunch of sensor information. So for example, it's using a camera to figure out, you know, Am I driving correctly in the lane? It's using LiDAR to find object detection and see if there's an obstacle in the way so you don't go and accidentally hit somebody. Or we've had you know, the Amazon Echo around for a while and that listens to you. you know, you're going out your day just talking normally and it listens and picks up on cues whenever you say, Alexa. And so all of that is done on the edge. It's picking up sensor information and then it is basically running a model and figuring out you know, some inference and what action to take based on the information it's gathered. And then another example is just, you, know, you want to deploy your applications on two different phones, right? So essentially on these phones, you're running machine learning models to do different things, such as image classification, for example, or for the case of like the Pixel 6, one of the recent things they came out with is you can do like a magic eraser. All these models are running inside your phone itself and to kind of expand on that, we have this idea of the traditional model, which is on your left. And so here, in this case, the, the sensor is on a separate device. It is picking up a ton of input data. So let's say for a Nest thermostat, right? It's going, it's figuring out, you know, what is the temperature at this time in this house? And it might want to do something with that data and figure out, okay, what should I do with this? And run some inferences on it. And it will send it to the cloud where the model is running the model will basically go, do some inference, and then return a result. And so then when you move your computation to the edge, which, what actually happens is you now have these models running directly on the devices. So for the example of the Amazon Echo from before, you're having the model run directly on the um, Echo itself, rather than going and running the model on the cloud. And so here, what actually happens is that now you have a bunch of different environments, right? You can deploy to many different edge devices that are built on different hardware. Uh, they have different memory, compute resource requirements, and whatnot. And so what are the benefits of doing this, actually? So you can see here from this picture, you are no longer egressing any data out to the cloud. So before, you know, you have a constant stream of data coming in, and then you're sending out to be like, okay, what should I do with this information? What is the inference that I want to make? But when you move it to edge compute, all the information stays within the device itself. And a lot of the times this is just stored in memory. And so that helps a lot because now you know, you're know you not sending something out, you're not waiting for the latency of that network request coming out to come back and tell you, okay, this is what I should do. And that helps a lot with latency and overall just egress. And then you also have security and privacy benefits. So now it's like you're not sending your data out to somewhere else, right? Going back to the Amazon Echo case, it's like you're talking constantly in your house and you don't really want all that information, like whatever you're saying, is to be sent to some remote cloud that is managed by someone else. Rather, you feel more comfortable where it's, you know, this device is in your home, and it's kind of all stored in memory, and then probably at some point eventually expired out because it no, no longer needs that information to make an inference. And so there's a lot of security and privacy benefits for moving to the edge. And then lastly, you have scalability, right? So let's say you have millions of connected devices. In the traditional model, you send all those, all that data to your cloud. And here in this case, you're actually handling it per device. So even if you have millions of devices, whatever you're doing in your cloud, it's not impacted by you know, all these inferences that need to be made on these individual devices. And so how, how do you actually go and start deploying these models to your edge devices? So how it usually happens is you're going to train it on your cloud as you normally would with just you know, the traditional model. You go and you tune all those parameters, you run your training data sets, and then you know, your model looks great. 
you're you know, able to accurately detect dogs from the example earlier today. And then you go and deploy these models to your edge devices. And so in this image here, I kind of labeled these boxes as different colors because I want to make it very clear that these may not be the same architecture. They may not have the same environment. They may have completely different hardware. And so you're just deploying these models to these heterogeneous environments. And what could go wrong, right? So here's an example of what could go wrong. On the top, you have this case where it's like, OK, well, one second is kind of slow, but you're running your model on your edge device, and the accuracy is just not right. So before, when you were training this thing on um, the cloud and running inferences, it was like able to classify this dog correctly. But then now you've deployed it to your iPhone, for example, and now it's starting to have some problems. Or in the other case, which is the bottom one, you go and you deploy, you deploy to your Android, and oh man, this model that ran really quickly when you're training it in the cloud, it takes 10 seconds and you have no idea what's going on. So you're running into all these issues and it wasn't the case when you're running on your, like, you know, your single cloud environment. So how do you actually go and debug these things, right? You have a bunch of different environments, right? You have an Android, you have an iPhone, or in some cases you have like a sensor running on this and a sensor running on some other device. How do you even go and figure this out? And that is where ML X-ray comes in. So ML X-ray is this project that came out of a Stanford research group. Uh, so tons of credit go to all those wonderful people on the bottom for just kind of going and figuring out all this information. But essentially, they built out this framework for providing visibility into what is happening on your edge deployments. And you can use those to figure out you know, what exactly is going wrong with my model that you know, usually works well in the other cases that I've deployed it. And ML X-ray. Essentially what they do is they give you an API that you can use to instrument your models. So at the top, you see an example of the Python API. And all you really need to do is say, my ML X-ray library, let's start uh, on inference start. You run your interpreter, and then on inference stop, you stop. And so this API, once you invoke that, it starts collecting per each layer in your model a bunch of interesting information that is going to be used to help you debug what is going wrong in your system. And so some of the information that it collects is you know, the original input of the model, the output of the model, you know, is the result correct? And also per layer, the input output, the end-to-end -end latency, so you actually know how long did this whole inference take, and also within the layers themselves, how long did those individual layers take? Things like memory, I think especially as you're moving to an edge device and these have lower like, memory and uh, compute resources, that is something you might want to hone on to. And then for in the case of the Android example they have in their Android API, it also collects other information such as peripheral sensor information, just like the orientation of the phone, the lighting that it's detected in the room, and that just helps you provide more context to the model that is being run. Uh, you can also go ahead and add your own, just like whatever you want to log in the ML X-ray logs. You can, there's the API allows you to go ahead and do that if there are custom fields that you might want to go and pick up. And it also allows you to write custom assertions, which I'll talk in a, about in a little bit. So now you have all this data coming in, right? You've instrumented your, your model. All this data is coming out as you're running it, but don't really know what to do with this information. It's like, OK, cool, this layer takes you know, this many milliseconds, and this one takes this many milliseconds. How do I actually use this information to figure out what is going wrong with the model that I've deployed on this edge device? And so the idea behind ML X-Ray is that there's a set of reference pipelines. And these are usually you know, the model that you've deployed on the cloud. You know that this is accurate. You know that this is kind of like the baseline for just how you want your model to perform. And what you do there is you run ML X-Ray on that reference pipeline. It gives you the logs. You know, it gives you this is how long each layer took. This is the approximate output and input of each layer. And then you run this on your development pipeline. And that gives you the same information. And then you basically do a diff between those to create a debug report to help you figure out, OK, this is what's going on with my system. This is what's different when I've deployed to this environment versus the other one. And the basic flow of this debug report is this. So first you do an accuracy validation. You look at your accuracy for your reference pipeline. You look at it for your development pipeline. Are they matching up? And if they match up, then that's, that's pretty great, right? Because now you're basically performing about how you might think when you've like, I've trained this model on my cloud. 
it looks like my device is accurately doing what I want it to do. But in a lot of cases, like I mentioned before, you're going to realize that is not the case and the accuracy goes down. And so then the next step of that is then you want to look into each layer specifically. So you're looking at the output and you're saying, is there a, a layer where this output accuracy is just, or the output is very, very different from the output that's received from my reference pipeline? And you, in the case where things are slow, then you want to compare latency. It's like, well, this layer took a lot longer than the other layer um, in my development pipeline. So you run through that. And that helps you hone about in on which layer is having problems. And then finally, like I mentioned before, there are some assertion checks. So you can specify these are custom assertions in your code that check inputs and outputs are what you expect. So let's say you have the self-driving um, case that I mentioned before, and you know that when you're running your camera, whenever you make an inference, all of the... Uh, the width of the street should always be the same. And so then this assertion check would be like, check that you know, the width of the input of the model is always five feet or something. Or check that you know, whatever is detected at the end, the width is five feet. And so what kind of issues can this pipeline actually help you debug? So there are three that I'm going to step into a little bit more detail for, but the first one is pre-processing errors. The next one is quantization inaccuracies, and then kernel optimization differences amongst heterogeneous environments. So that's kind of the case I mentioned before, where you have a bunch of different hardware and just completely different environments that your models are running on. So the first is pre-processing errors. And I think even in a case where you're not deploying to an edge device, you're going to run into this, right? You have something collecting information that you're using to structure for your input to your model, and that's going to be different from whatever that model is expecting. And this happens even more in the edge device case because since these are all running on different environments and different hardware, your sensor might be picking up information in different ways. Or you know, in the case where you have, you know, you're taking pictures using a camera, that, that could lead to the case where it's like you might need to shrink your information or shrink the picture so that it runs well on your edge device because it has lower memory requirements. And so there's cases like resizing that I just mentioned where you might need to be downscaling the image or in some cases upscaling the image if the camera's not picking up the right resolution or there's something wrong with the sensor or just the information is coming in differently and the, it, the information might be uh, rotated whenever you're feeding it into the model which can lead to uh, very low accuracy. Or in some cases, there's a lot of models that might pick up your images and expect it in RGB format or BGR format, and you don't really know which it is. And so how does ML X-ray help in this case? So this goes back to the assertions that I mentioned before, but essentially whenever ML X-ray is running on your pipeline, it's going to go and run these assertions to make sure that it checks and passes. So here in this example, this is using the Python API, and this is checking that it expects your input to be in RGB format. So it's checking if this, this thing is accidentally coming in as BGR format, it's going to let you know. So it's like, hey, your deployment pipeline, it's broken. You're going to need to go and add this pre-processing step to convert to the RGB format. And just kind of stepping through exactly what this code is doing, it's taking in the input from your development uh, that's called edge out, and then the input from your reference pipeline, and it's saying, do these look the same? And if they do, then okay, that's, that's great. If not, then let's try to convert your input from your development pipeline to RGB format. And then now if it matches, then it's like, oh yeah, you had a channel mismatch. And so then it will raise the assertion and let you know that there's an issue with your model. Another issue you might run into is through quantization. So in quantization, this especially becomes important when you're deploying to edge devices because you just, like I said before, have lower uh, resource requirements and so therefore you might want to go and quantize this information so that it uses less memory or less CPU. And essentially what this means is that you're converting the weights and biases of your model to a lower precision. So in this example picture, you know, you start with the floating point 32-bit number and then you do quantization to convert that to a int 8. And some of the issues that can happen here is that your quantization process could just be wrong. So one of the methods of quantizing your data, it needs to know the min and max of your input. And what can happen in that case is, let's say you have your training data, and there's an outlier in that training data that will heavily scale or 
that's going to scale your min and max to some extreme end, and whereas most of the stuff should like follow somewhere in the middle and you know don't follow what that outlier is. And so in that case, when you quantize, you actually get the wrong values for your weights and biases, and that's going to lower your accuracy. And how ML X-ray helps in this case is that it looks at that per layer output and it compares it to the reference pipeline, so you can see how is your um, development pipeline doing in regards to the reference one. So here we have two examples. So the orange line is this uh, model that we know all the weights, all the biases have been quantized, they work. And we compare that to the baseline, which is you know that perfect baseline image that has been a perfect baseline model that has been trained in the cloud. And we can see that the, the mean square error is right there in the bottom, it's pretty low. And that's doing great. And then you have this other model that you've trained and you've quantized it and you see that, okay, comparing that to my baseline, the error is much higher. And so therefore I should go in and try to figure out just what I need to do. Do I need better training data to fix this or what, what other processes can I do to quantize my weights? And then last, this one is very unique to edge compute because now you're deploying to a bunch of different devices. These have different uh, hardware requirements. These just at the core of it, in the kernel, optimize different operations in different ways. And so this can lead to a huge latency difference or performance between uh, devices. So you know, in one case, you have something running, it's very fast, and then in some other case, you don't know why it's the same model and it's really slow. And so we used ML X-Ray to help us create this graph here, and you can see that we've compared against different models how long it takes to run each layer. And some of the results are pretty surprising, right? So you have this, the, uh, the quantile, or not the quantile, the quantized version um, pipeline that we used before is actually pretty slow in that second convolution step. And ML X-ray helps you figure out, it's like, okay, this layer, there's something wrong and that's why it's slow and maybe I need to deploy like a special model to this particular hardware. So I'm gonna walk through a little bit about what using ML X-ray actually looks like. So first, this is a nifty collab that we have that just shows like an example model uh, that uses ML X-ray. So the first thing you need to do is install the ML X-ray library. And then you want to go and just create your model runner class. So this is just using TensorFlow Lite. And the important things to kind of pick up on here are essentially this M monitor. So you're initializing ML X-ray to go ahead and start logging information from each output layer and you know the inputs and outputs. And then finally you go, you invoke the model. This is not specific to ML X-ray at all. So this is all just code for uh, how to run the model itself. And then you're gonna wanna run the model on an image, so this is an image classification example. Uh, you can see here that we ask for the log path to go to these specific files, and then you run the model. So here, let me scroll down a little bit more. The model's essentially run, and in the background, ML X-ray has picked up just like a bunch of logs about how each layer is running, about the latency of each layer, all of that information. So what does that actually look like? Here's an example of an ML X-ray log. And there's a ton of information in here, right? You have the start time, you have the overall latency of how long your inference took, you have the memory usage, and you have for each layer all the outputs. And this is, I'm not gonna keep scrolling, it's just a ton of information. You also get your summary information, so this tells you for each layer, how long did it take, how much memory did it take, the names of it. So it just collects a bunch of interesting information. So now you have all this information, what exactly do you do with it? ML X-Ray has an API that you can use to go and start parsing this data and making sense out of it. So here's just an example script. It loads in a bunch of things from the ML X-Ray library. Uh, this first function here, it goes, reads the logs in, it parses it, so you see here it's reading the logs, it's getting the keys and the values, and then essentially in the end, it can plot the results. And we used this code to plot those results earlier that I showed back on that slide where it was comparing the, uh, the accuracy between the different, or the differences between the output layers. So you can essentially very quickly get started with ML X-Ray.
Okay, and then jumping back to my slides. Oops. You can see that ML X-ray has some limitations. And the first one is that you need code changes to go and enable instrumentation on your uh, debug pipeline. And that can be annoying, right? Because you might go deploy it, and then you're like, oh, I forgot to add this, uh, I forgot to add this line in to go and invoke ML X-ray, and you have to go back in and do that. And generally, when we're, whenever we're doing observability, we like you know, low-touch uh, instrumentation. There's also a slight imp uh, performance impact when you're using ML X-ray. So obviously, it's more noticeable on GPU. You're writing tons of things to logs. So that also has a memory impact, because you're just storing all this data somewhere. And then I think we could kind of see towards the end, it was like, OK, I have all this data. Now I need to use this Python API to go ahead and parse it. And I can use that API to create a graph. But it kind of limits you in how you can actually go and visualize this information. What if you want to do more interesting things with it? Because it's not in some standard output format that you can like, stick into any tool that you want. It's kind of hard to go and just build more interesting visualizations with it. So kind of here how I got. Um, involved in ML X-ray is I worked on Pixie. I mentioned that before. And there were a lot of correlations between how we do things in Pixie that I thought could help the ML X-ray project. And so just like a brief summary, again, Pixie is an open source uh, CNCF sandbox project for observability on Kubernetes. And there are three pillars that I think kind of help in the ML X-ray case. So the first is auto telemetry. So Pixie picks up information using tools like eBPF without you having to go and instrument things in your application. So it just automatically starts collecting information as soon as it's deployed. And that really helps in the ML X-ray case where you have to go right now, you have to add that line to be like, I want to invoke ML X-ray and start seeing information. Uh, this also helps in the case where it's like you don't want this thing running on your pipeline all the time, right? You maybe want it when you're debugging, but in the future, it's like when you know it's running well, you don't want it anymore. So you're going to have to go and take that line out of your uh, code that invokes ML X-ray. The second thing is that Pixie really does well with edge compute. So that fits very well in this case where we're deploying across edge devices. It makes sure you kind of follow all those standards where it's like you're keeping all of that data on the edge uh, in memory. And then finally, I think the biggest thing that ML X-Ray would uh, benefit from is Pixie's scriptable interfaces. So here, there's essentially a data format for Pixie. Everything is inside a table. And you can go and do whatever you want with that information to build visualizations very easily. And so this is kind of just a preview about just like how we wanted to apply Pixie's use case to ML X-Ray. So we're actually going to go into this in more detail tomorrow on Kubernetes on Edge Day. So if you'd like to come by and learn some more, that would be great to see you guys all again. But uh, here are some resources for ML X-Ray. So the first one, of course, all this is open source. ML X-Ray is open source. Pixie is open source. Check out the repo. Check out the code. Try running stuff yourself. Uh, I also included the ML X-Ray paper for those who are like more interested in picking up on some of like the very technical uh, information. We have time for one or two questions. Uh, if there's anyone that has a question. Yes, we have a question. Oh, hi, thank you for the presentation. Really great work. Um, I have a question. So why was the decision made to use logs to diff the layer outputs between the cloud and the edge model, for example? Why not probe the actual layers? Because I'm assuming you own both the edge model and the cloud model, right? Uh, logs can run into issues, for example, of formatting and also being really like large. You know, your model is large. You're going to be storing large text files, um, and also the parsing is pretty expensive and can be error prone. So why not probe the actual layers? Uh, you know, in the cloud and the edge models. Yeah, so I think that's a very good point. So the initial version of this does use logs, and I think that's because it is hard to get this information on some edge device that you've deployed to that you don't have access to as easily. And so then when I mentioned Pixie later, we essentially do use probes to go and pick up that information rather than going and recording it and writing it and storing in memory where you have to go and just, you know, grab that file and then parse it later. So luckily the parsing itself, that's when you actually want to go and debug your pipeline, and so that's like done async and not actually in the model when you're running it. Quick. So how did you end up solving the issue? You said it was difficult to parse 
the edge model? How did you end up solving this issue? Difficult to parse. You said it was difficult to probe the edge model because it's like on the edge, so you don't have direct access to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will talk more about that if you're going to go to Edge Day. Uh, essentially, Pixie uses this thing called eBPF, and that runs at the kernel level, and so then that can pick up a ton of interesting information. Okay, last question. So I understand that uh, Pixie telemetry model in general for like service monitoring. Mm -hmm. I was curious about uh, ML model performance and perhaps those data also being interesting to be aggregated and looked at in a place where people are usually looking at ML performance uh, comparisons like in weights and biases. Do you guys have like, a, like a, a picture of like where those data could somehow intersect or how you could bring them together like that? Yeah. So. I guess in relating to Pixie, we use eBPF, like I said, and that kind of picks up. You can use eBPF to hook onto certain U probes, so that are like certain user defined functions, and then that can collect a bunch of information. Uh, you, you can get like the arguments of that function, you can get the outputs of that function, and you can uh, send all that data to Pixie to visualize it. I hope, does that answer your question? I'm not sure I got it correct. <laughs> but we'll be talking more about it tomorrow. So. Hopefully you can come by and see our demo about how we just like use Pixie to go and like probe all this information and what information we can get. Okay, we have another question from the Slack channel. So the question is, is ML X-ray mainly for deep learning? All the examples shown seem to assume layers. Yes, yes, so it is primarily for deep learning, that is correct. Okay, cool, thank you.